Hello guys, my name is Irina. Recently I watched Squid Game Netflix show and I was amazed by the story. So I got inspired and I wanted to create a killer doll from the game Green Light Red Light in Blender. And I wanted to share the process with you. So let's go! First I imported the reference image from the movie. Then I started creating these mesh for the body using simple meshes. I added a head of the doll and tried to follow as much as possible a reference image throughout the modeling process. Next, with a subdivided cube, I created a neck. After that, I created a base mesh for the body. I added legs and created feet as well. For beginners, my advice is always to use reference to get as many as possible accurate results. After that, I started creating t-shirt and with cubes and spheres I created arms. Because the model is a robot toy doll, it has connector for the elbow, which made the modeling part easier. After that, I started modeling hands. First, I created one cube, which I extruded for four times for four fingers. Next, I extruded fingers and I used the back face to extrude the thumb. Then I started to reshape the hand and start moving fingers to get the same pose as doll. I used the basic principles for modeling and also proportional editing tools to get the correct shape for the hands. It took me a little bit, but in the end everything was fine. Once I was done with the hands, I focused on the legs. The first thing that I started creating were socks. I duplicated the mesh from the legs with Shift and D and separated it with P. After that, I added Solidify Shrink Wrap as Subdivision Modifier and I focused on creating small details for the socks ending part. For that part, I used Circle at Shrink Wrap Modifier and I extruded it down. Later, I selected every second vertex of the mesh and slightly moved them down along the axis and I was done with socks. At the end of the modeling glass, I used the same method as I used for the socks. I went to edit mode, then I selected the vertices that I want to duplicate and then once I duplicated them, I separated them from the socks and made them separate objects. Once I did that, I started shaping them. Don't forget to always use a mirror modifier if you have a symmetry model. Next, I created skirt for the model. I used a circle and positioned it to the center of the doll with a shrink wrap, solidify and subdivision modifier and snap tool. For the bottom part of the dress, the ruffles, I used the same technique as I did for the top part of the socks. I selected every second one and moved them down along the axis to get some basic folds. I also moved the bottom vertices inside to create ruffles on the dress, but later on we will be adding some additional changes and details using the sculpting. Later, I made some changes to the t-shirt by moving the vertices and then I started creating collar. I created a collar using the same technique as the dress. Firstly, I added the circle, then onto that I added the same modifiers as for the dress. Once I was done with the body, then I paid more attention to the head by creating the base mesh for the hair. I created the hair by duplicating the top part of the head and by separating it. Then I started shaping the hair and making the two ponytails on the side using the mirror modifier. When I finished modeling the hair, I focused on the ears by deleting the base and then I went to edit mode and I extruded the faces from the head and shaped them. Now that we are done with modeling, let's jump to sculpting, which is my favorite part. In this stage, I was focused on the details and the head. First, I started working on the head features. The first thing I did was add a multi-resolution modifier that allowed me to subdivide my mesh so I could sculpt later without adding additional vertices that could slow down my computer. 
I like this method more than Dine Topo and Remash, but you can use any of these three methods simply which suits you better. After adding the multi-resolution modifier, I started sculpting the face from which I first made the eye sockets with different brushes. After that, I used a mask to extract the nose, which I then shaped. The doll has a very small nose, as you can see, so I paid attention so that even from the profile it looks tiny. When I finished with the nose, I continued sculpting the forehead and cheeks, where I added clay, so I got the desired shape. Also, if you want to learn how to sculpt and use Blender, you can check our online academy, rendercraft.com. Currently, we have more than 80 courses available for you guys, and we create new content every single month. So make sure to check it out. So let's continue on with the video. When I finished with that, using various brushes, I shaped the mouth. When I was done shaping the mouth, I switched to the eyes where I added a sphere, I added a subdivision modifier on that sphere, and by simple modeling, I added pupils. Of course, we added a mirror modifier because the eyes are symmetrical. Lastly, we added the details on the eyes, and from that, we are done with the face. After that, I jumped on hair sculpting, for which I used different brushes. Then, using a subdivided cube and an array modifier with a curve modifier, we modeled the hair ties and placed them on the ponytails. Also, I made a hairpin and placed it on top of her bangs. Finally, when I finished modeling the hairpin, I started defining the last details, such as the details on the dress, the t-shirt, and also the face. When I made the final details, I added the eyelashes using the same principle as with the modeling of the collar. Now that I was done with modeling and sculpting, I was able to focus on adding the materials, so let me show you how I did it. I applied the multi-resolution modifier, then I was able to add the vertex paint. Firstly, I went to the shader editor and there I added a vertex color node, from which I was able then to add color to the doll's head. Then I started painting. I added all the contours for the face, such as the eye sockets, eyebrows, rosy cheeks, and rosy nose. I painted the colors as close as possible to the colors from the reference. For the rest of the body, I used basic materials. Because the model should represent the doll, I used basic material with specular higher and roughness lower to get that plastic feel of her skin. Once I was done with materials, I used HDRI for the lighting of the scene. I found a similar environment HDRI from the original scene from polyheaven.com. Once I was done with modeling, sculpting and material, I was able to focus on final render and small details to enhance the final look of my model. So let me show you how I did it! First, I imported the 3D model of the tree. Then I imported the image of the weed grass and I made it transparent. Later on, I added a circle, which I subdivided a couple of times using the insert face. Then I added the particle system on the circle and for the particles, I selected the image of the weed grass. 
I fix the rotation of the particles and for distribution I use weight painting and also I remove the loosened particles from the bottom. For the ground and the platform I use materials that I found in a blender kit. After that I did a test render and I played with compositing to enhance the overall look of the render. I used glare note to add more glow to the render as well. After compositing, I went to the final render settings on which I tried different color management options, changed the render engine to cycles, turned on denoise, and I was done with the scene. So that was it guys, it was a fun project to create. I just want to encourage all Blender users to capture those inspiring moments and try to use them to boost their motivation and creativity. Until the next video! Bye! I don't know.